selfish ambition, jealousy and resentment, misrepresented truths, delusional expectations. Sounds like a murderous plotline, right? Well, all of these are indicative of the feminist agenda. Hey guys, how's it going? This is Jacqueline, the Unborn Homemaker, and today let's talk about womanhood. First up, we have misrepresented truths or lies as normal people call it. Somehow, some things we consider basic truths were in fact misrepresentations or outright lies. We were persuaded to believe that all men are rapists. Even our young sons will grow up to become rapists. We were convinced that all men do is sit around and talk about how they want to maintain dominance in the world and make sure women suffer loss. We heard the most horrific tales of slavery being forced upon women in their own homes. We were taught that the way to make sure he does his share in the home is the second he hits the door, shove the baby in his arms, tell him you'll be back as you grab your purse and keys to flee your prison. We were told that our work in the home was less important, less worthy, and that the only thing that truly matters was your earning potential. They said housewives are stupid because educated women would never consent to be cooped up all day surrounded by children, dishes, and laundry. That we were really making sure our daughters didn't succumb to the demeaning domestic tasks by giving over the care and keeping of our children to the school systems and daycares. Lie after lie after lie was constructed, twisted, and fed to us by our own sex. It was the women who did this to us. Selfish ambition. It seems that because we believed and lived out these lies on a constant basis, we had to always be ambitious, even in areas where we had no real interest. Our own personal wishes had to be abdicated, lest men regain a foothold of dominance again. They never lost it, in my opinion. We women just became angry distortions who needed men and loved men and absolutely hated men and hated ourselves for loving them. <laughs> the forced comparison of who's the greater sex, who's the smartest, the most talented, the better of mankind or womankind per the diehards. As women, it was always a competition of the utmost importance, trickling down even into the elementary schools where we sang, anything you can do, I can do better, as our motto. Jealousy and resentment. These two things go hand in hand. Being jealous of perceived superiority made us resent being a woman. Whatever he seemed capable or naturally gifted at, we had to try to dominate and excel even more. And when we failed, because we usually did, we became bitter and resentful and ready to punish any man who we allowed to be our man. The occasional times that there were triumphs, these were the ones that were paraded around as the goals, as the absolute highest that women can reach. So we tried to take the competition to our side of the gender roles and say things like, oh, he's a horrible dad because he's too rough, he's too tough, he's too aggressive, he's too passive. He's terrible at being a husband because he doesn't even know how to communicate, how to be romantic. He doesn't understand how to make the children feel better or how to run the household. But then that backfired because in an attempt to prove we are better in our areas, we took back our gender roles. But then we had to do our own work. So we became jealous that we weren't out in the world like him. And we also realized that no one cares if you excel in your home. So it was back to the workplace we went because making a name for ourselves meant we wouldn't have to share that glory with him. Delusional expectations. 
In the feminist movement, they built up some of the most delusional expectations I have ever dreamed possible. The viewpoints and expectations that, despite being incontrovertibly proven false, they continue to tout as true. Like that we are as strong as men. Even teenage boys are usually stronger than their mother. But that didn't stop us from believing we could kick a boy's butt. So we got in fights and we lost. They also said that we can work as long and as hard as men, but what did it cost us as women? It made us harden our hearts to our baby's cries when we left them at daycare at six weeks old for our 10 hour work shifts. We had to distance our love for them from ourselves in order to do our job. We had to skip their first and their ceremonies because we had to prove we were valuable employees. We were told that this is the best thing for women. We were told you can do both career and family, but we all know, we all know one is done better because it provides more respect, more honor, and cash. In a nutshell, feminism stopped being about getting equal rights constitutionally for us and more about how and why to hate men and fight against traditional ways. They made us bitter, tired, overworked, and still underpaid, resentfully ambitious, and delusional creatures who are to be most pitied. Let me know in the comment section any things that I have missed that you've found out about the feminist agenda. I'd love to hear about it. That's it for today, guys. Thank you for joining me, and I will see you next time here at the homestead. Bye.